Hey there, this is Handyman007, and this, is not your usual spray can. Because what's inside, is not at all paint, but liquid rubber. Yes, you heard it right, liquid, rubber, in a can. And in order for me to show you this product in action, and share my honest opinion about it, I'm gonna have to take you outside our home, on top of our roof, to our foyer, and in the kitchen. And do stick around until the very end of the video, because I have a huge surprise for you. Are you ready? Let's go. So what is, seal spray? It is an instant waterproofing and repair spray. In other words, it allows you to seal, coat, and protect any water leak, instantly. Unlike other waterproofing products, that you need to mix in or apply with your hands, or some sort of tool, you simply spray this solution, and let it dry. It can cover small leaks and cracks, effortlessly. It works on multiple surfaces and scenarios, including cement, roofs, steel, pipes, fillings, etc. The repair that you do with seal spray is strong, and can last for years and years. And since one canister contains 450 milliliters of product, and has a shelf life of 3 years, seal spray can be used for multiple repairs, and stops you from wasting money on plumbing companies, and so-called professionals that overcharge. And by the way, it comes in 3 colors. Black, white, and transparent. But, enough talk. Let's see if all the good stuff, written on its product label, will actually stand true in real-world scenarios, beginning with my wife's, orange basin. As you can see, the side of this basin has a crack, where water is seeping through. And if I lift it up, the leak becomes even more obvious. So I'm really excited how seal spray will fare, in this minor repair. But first, let me discard the water into the intake pipe of our sub-irrigated planter, or SIP. After I published the three-part series showing how I built this, a lot of people were asking for footage how to refill this. Well, this is how. And we never have to worry about overfilling, because the reservoir and drain system built into this, ensures that the water level will always remain constant. If you want to learn the steps how to build one, click the info card on the upper right, or if you don't see it, check out the links in the description below. Anyway, let's go back to how we're gonna repair our orange basin with seal spray. Let's follow the direction on the can, step by step. Step 1 is, make sure surface is cleaned of dirt. I have just washed this basin thoroughly, and as you can see, this is the crack we need to repair. It's about 3 to 4 inches long. Notice that there are a couple of holes along the brim. My wife intentionally made these, so she can hang the basin when not in use. So we're gonna leave these alone. Let me just dry this off with a clean rag, and set it on a stable surface. For this first test, I'm gonna use, white seal spray. And step 2 says, shake the can. Well for at least 30 seconds. Step 3 says, remove the cap and point away from yourself and any humans. I do notice that the actuator, also known as a push valve, has a short plastic nozzle attached to it. About half an inch? I wonder if this is enough to direct the product properly, once propelled. We'll see. Step 4 says, spray 20 centimeters away from the target, for a more even and smooth spray. Okay, let's do this. You know what? Let me quickly sand the immediate area around the crack, to ensure the surface is really clean of contaminants and residue. I want to apply due diligence, to give seal spray, or any product for that matter, a good fighting chance for its first test. Okay, here we go. Maybe because I'm used to working with spray paint cans, it was unexpected for me that I needed to push the actuator much harder, to dispense the product. Even did a test spray on the side before spraying on the basin. And when I saw seal spray out of the can for the first time, I immediately understood why it was so. Because it is way more viscous than spray paint. Step 5 says, leave to dry, and spray a second coating, if needed. But how dry, is dry? After 5 minutes? 10 minutes? Dry to the touch? If so, what does dry to the touch even supposed to feel like? Nothing on the label indicated, the time interval between coats, nor the curing time required before the coated object, or surface, can be safely exposed to water. So for this basin, I simply observed if the white patch has stopped curdling, and, oozing, before I went for a second coat. I also noticed that the spray coverage is quite broad, and there's a bit of peripheral spatter. 
good thing that the product is easy to wipe off with a damp cloth, if it's still freshly sprayed. I was beginning to doubt myself if I was way off the recommended 20 cm distance, in the first coat. So on the second coat, I even got a measuring tape, just to make sure I'm spraying 20 cm away from the basin. But the peripheral spatter still persisted. The pressure from the can is so strong, that it even creates a backsplash. Did you miss it? Let me replay in slow motion. Since there was no curing time specified on the label, I had to conduct my own experiment, to arrive at a realistic curing period. First, I let it stand undisturbed for 20 full minutes. After 20 minutes, I lightly touch the surface with my fingers. While the product still feels pliable, it doesn't transfer to my skin anymore. This is a good sign that it has started to cure, but still has a long way to go from being complete. This tells me I have to let it stand much much longer. And this, is seal spray fully cured. It now has a hard rubbery texture, and a very dry feel. Pressing on it no longer leaves indentions and fingerprints. Yes, creases will still form, when I dig my nails into it. But this behavior is almost always consistent with hard rubber. So I'm good. The total time it took to reach this ideal state was, 5 hours, in open air. Now to answer the question that really matters, is the basin back to being 100% waterproof? I will show you the results later, but first, let's move on to our second experiment. This, is a much bigger basin, and with multiple and bigger cracks. Three months ago, I tried sealing the cracks with these flex tape, rubberized waterproof tape. Its quality is so poor, it didn't even stand against water in the first 20 seconds. It is also advertised that it can even adhere to wet surfaces, this is a complete lie. It can't even adhere on a clean dry surface long enough. It is also not very pliable, so it struggles to conform to the shape of the surface you are trying to patch. So either of two things could have happened. The seller sold me a fake product. Or this flex tape does actually have very poor quality to begin with. So now, I'm quite excited to see if seal spray can do a much better job, and take away my frustration. For this green basin, I'm gonna use black seal spray instead. While I'll follow the exact same steps I did with the orange basin, there are two things I'm slightly doing differently. 1. Instead of covering the exterior, I'm gonna apply seal spray, on the interior wall. For high volume containers, like this 30 liter basin, it makes more sense to patch cracks from the inside. Because the more water you put in, the stronger the outward pressure becomes, which in turn, presses the patch harder, thereby sealing the crack even better. And 2. I'm taping the area around the cracks, and will use some kind of cover, to minimize the peripheral spatter. In essence, I'm gonna use a similar approach that most people do, when working with spray paint cans. Now it's time to peel off the masking tapes. And it's critical to do this now, while seal spray is still pliable. Otherwise, if I did this after it has fully cured, I bet the tape will have bonded with seal spray, and will not result in very crisp lines like these. However, I must admit, that I should have done a better job, in covering the areas where I didn't want seal spray on. But since this is just a utility basin, I wasn't very particular about looks. I simply wanted to find out if it's feasible to avoid peripheral spatter, on future repair projects, where how things look, is equally important, as sealing water leaks. We're gonna come back to this basin later, after seal spray has fully cured. And how long is the curing time again? That's right, at least 5 hours. In the meantime, let's now put my wife's orange basin, to the test. I'm gonna fill this with water, to the brim. Can you see any water leaking? I don't. And it looks like seal spray is doing a terrific job in keeping the crack, waterproof. 
Even after 10 minutes, the area around the basin is still completely dry. Let me lift this up, and see if there's water underneath. Nothing. Ha, that's awesome. Later, I'll show you the leak test result of our green basin, and another seal spray quick tip. For now, our third experiment will be on this leaking aquarium, or fish tank. This has been in storage for a long time, because as you can see, despite having applied silicon sealant, along the flooring edges, corners, and the front panel, it's still leaking water everywhere. I can't even tell where water is exactly escaping from. And this recent crack that formed across the flooring, has made the situation even worse. And since it's made of glass, it's a good opportunity to try out transparent seal spray. To ensure I have 100% coverage, and prevent future cracks, I spray two coats across the entire flooring, and at least an inch, above all four sides. The trade-off, however, is that I ended up using more than half the can. In any case, I will leave the aquarium to cure overnight, and later show you the results. I'll also share my thoughts, if seal spray is a practical solution, for this kind of repair. Meanwhile, let's go back to our green basin. This is how it looks like after two coats in 10 hours. And you might be wondering, what the milky spatter on top of the black seal spray is. It's actually, transparent seal spray, which I used as my second coat. Why? Because I was curious how the two colors will react to each other, and how the area will look like once cured. Well, here it is. It isn't really transparent, but more translucent. And with a lot of bubbles. As for our leak test result? Watch for yourself. By the way, because of seal spray's strong backsplash, you will almost always have some spatter on your hands, unless you wear gloves. But if the product does come in contact with your skin, it can be washed off with soap and water. It's actually specified on the product label, under the first aid section. Thankfully, I didn't experience any skin irritation. But I do recommend to wash it off immediately, because if it dries up on your skin, the harder it will be to rub off. Before I show you the aquarium's water leak test, let's move on to our fourth scenario. The roof. This concrete overhang, supports our garage roofing, and is one of the most frustrating areas in our home. Because it leaks all around whenever it rains. And it absorbs rain water so much, that it continues to drip, long after the rain has gone. What's frustrating about this, is that over the years of hiring different professionals, using various waterproofing solutions, like Vulcaseal, Epoxy Primer, Silicon Sealant, etc., and spending so much money for labor and materials, multiple leaks still persist. The latest repair done was a bit promising, because it kinda lasted for several months. That is, until now. So I'm gonna wait for the rain to stop, and hopefully by tomorrow, the roof will be completely dry for us to do some DIY repair. And it's my hope that Seal Spray, will be our final solution for this recurring problem. So here we are on top of the roof. And it's always refreshing to have a different perspective up here, compared to being on the ground. It's a hot sunny day though, so it's important to do repairs as quickly as possible. But before I show you how I apply seal spray, on our main area of concern, I noticed a couple of holes on the roof, that I might as well cover. I'm carefully walking down the area, where I think I need to apply seal spray on. But since I'll be on a precarious surface, and I need to free up my other hand to support myself, I won't be able to film my actual spraying. 
In any case, I'll show you how it looks like right after. We'll be back with you shortly. The fact that seal spray is a spray, I now can see why it's the best option, for sealing uneven surfaces, like our exterior walls which have a stucco finish. And it's ideal for repairs, wherein you're not sure where a leak, or multiple leaks are coming from. All I had to do was spray along the seams, where the wall and the roofing meet, and I was done in less than 5 minutes. I'm not too concerned about how this black band of seal spray sticks out, because our exterior walls are scheduled to be repainted in a few days anyway. However, do note that it took an entire can of seal spray, to cover all the sections I showed you. What I cannot show you, is visual confirmation if seal spray has indeed, sealed all the leaks, because obviously, I need to wait for the next rainfall. Perhaps I'll show you updates in a future video, including how seal spray looks like, once painted over. For now, let's get back down for our aquarium leak test. Just to be on the safe side, I let seal spray cure overnight, and now, the moment of truth. So, it's confirmed, our liquid rubber in a can, can even seal glass. There's one last area where I would like to test seal spray's effectiveness, and it's most likely the same space in your home, you would frequently have leaks. But before that, a word of advice. Just because a product like seal spray, is super capable of doing a job it's designed for, it doesn't mean you have to use it on any, and all water sealing repairs. Because you also need to consider, if a solution is cost effective for a specific problem. For example, if you remember, I used half a can of seal spray, in repairing this fish tank, because it has so many cracks. But since a fish tank this size, actually costs less than one can of seal spray, it might have been more economical, if I had just bought a brand new one, with zero cracks. On the other hand, if seal spray will save you from spending tons of money, and time, on new materials and hired labor, such as in the case of our leaking roof, then I highly recommend, that you first consider a seal spray solution. And now we have reached the kitchen, the kitchen sink, to be specific. Listen, if you're going to use seal spray indoors, I recommend that you wear a mask. Because like most products, delivered via a spray can, seal spray does contain a mix of chemicals. It actually has a similar smell to paint thinner. From here on out, I won't do any more commentary, on what I'm showing on screen. It's pretty straightforward, and I'm sure you'll figure it out. What I will say though, is that this has been a long video, and even longer to produce. Actually, my longest one so far. Because I sincerely wanted to explore with you, seal spray's capabilities, and limitations. And before I reward you with a surprise, that I promised you for staying with me this far, I'd like to share my final thoughts, on seal spray. Yes, it's easy. Yes, it's convenient. And yes, it's versatile. But compared to most conventional waterproofing solutions, it has a much higher price point. I'd like to think that it's the premium you have to pay, for a relatively novel, effective, and genuine, quick fix product. And why did I say it's genuine? Legit. Because unlike other similar products, that are sold on the usual online shopping platforms, and thus, might be prone to imitation and fakery, Seal Spray is sold, from its own website, sealspraph.com. And regardless of the number of cans and colors you order, if you use my special discount code, HandymanSeal, you'll enjoy 10% off. Yes, you heard it right, get 10% off, just by entering and applying, Handyman Seal, in the discount code field, right after hitting the checkout button. And for your convenience, I have included the link to Seal Spray's website, along with my discount code, in the video description below. Simply click the link, and copy paste my discount code, upon checkout. I hope the discount, is a nice additional incentive for you, along with what you've learned from this video. While it had been a long process producing this video, I have to admit, I enjoyed doing it. And if you're someone who's interested in rough cuts, and raw footages, I have created a version of this video, without the sound design and special effects. In other words, you'll be able to experience what's happening behind the scenes, with all their unadulterated glory. However, that version is only accessible by exclusive members of my channel. Hit the join button underneath this video, or on my channel's homepage, to learn more about membership, along with the perks and rewards, of being part, of the Handyman 007 community. And with that, I'm gonna bring this product review video, to a close. This is Handyman 007, thanks for watching, and you, can, do this.